Okay. Hi. Good afternoon from San Diego and from Miami. <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in. I am here with Bella and we are going to spend a little time discussing the transits and some of the themes that we see in the collective and in the energy and how that might impact and influence you. Um, so if you are familiar with the work that we do, we use Gene Keys, Human Design and Astrology. And uh, what we're gonna be doing is pulling up the genetic matrix chart. So if you have run your charts before, you've probably done it through genetic matrix or my body graph. What we're doing now is we're looking at the transits, which is what's alive, what's coming through, that cosmic energy, just like there's ast astrology forecast. This is where we add in the com component of the gates, the gene keys. Remember a gate is the same as a gene key is the same as a hexagram is the same as our 64 archetypes. So it's just a, um, another detail that helps you be really specific about what's alive because we can say that we just had a full moon in what was it? Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And we're in Leo season. So what do those two things mean? Now we have the opportunity to look at every single planet and see what gate it's in, not just what house and what sign it's in. So this gives a lot more information. So we're going to, Bella's going to pull up the um, transit and then she'll explain a little bit about what's alive. And the cool thing here with genetic matrix is that we see both the body graph and the astrological wheel. So we have like two different geometries. And we were mentioning yesterday that something we don't see in the wheel is that the only channel right now that's activated is the 360. So this is the North Node that has the eternal child archetype. And then we have the 60, which is the magician that uses limitations as kind of building blocks or stepping stones for mutation for uh going forward in something that we don't really know but this is about a pulse and about the creativity that can't be controlled so we can feel a lot of limitations and the other place that that kind of shows itself to the in the transit today is that we have the moon in a few hours there's going to be conjunct with saturn which is also about limitations and kind of severe our teacher in gate 55 so the moon is kind of our emotional reality and Saturn is our teacher and tells us that there are rules and we can't just do whatever. So th them being together, of course, there can be something emotional coming up around uh, the limitations that we feel, something around uh, victimization where we feel like we can't, it's not possible, we, we are limited, we are almost like victims or helpless. But there can also be something about a responsibility for our emotions because responsibility is the Saturn activation and then the moon is is our emotions. So depending on how mature we are emotionally, I feel <laughs> that this transit can be pow like powerful in a, in a positive way or powerful in a little bit more of like a way that has us look at those places where we kind of give up. And the 55 is the individual circuitry we see here, the 55 connected to 39. So it's all about seeing our triggers as possibilities for freedom and liberation, seeing or feeling maybe the heaviness of, of the emotions as a po possibility or a portal to individual freedom and, and liberation. Um, and then the other thing that Ashley was kind of tapping into that we also confirmed in this chart is that Mercury has gone into uh, the 40, gate 40, the shadow of exhaustion in Virgo. And uh, there's a bit of this Virgo energy that can also be a kind of perfectionism that maybe, you know, here Saturn is never really happy. So where is it today where we feel like we're doing our best, but we're still not really happy with ourselves and we don't maybe have those quantum leaps that we are wanting to have, but it kind of feels a little bit more like oh, we're doing the same thing and, and the results are maybe not showing themselves necessarily. Uh, so these are some of the themes that we can feel today and, you know, tomorrow as well. Yeah. And something that I've been noticing in a lot of the conversations I've been having were around the 40. I wasn't entirely sure that there was something activated in the transit. I didn't know Mercury went into the 40, but over the past two days, the 40 has been showing up. And I wanted to speak a little bit about what the energy of exhaustion feels from somebody that doesn't have it activated and what it might feel in you. And then as somebody that doesn't have it, what can I do to help the person 
that is having that has that energy. So for example, the 40 is the frequency goes from exhaustion to divine will through the pathway of resolve. Is that right? Resolve or yeah, resolve. And something that I've noticed is for people that carry this energy, it's almost like you just assume they've got it. They're okay. They can carry it. They have a lot of responsibility. They carry it all and it's, it's fine. Um, but they're, they're here to work. They're here to serve. They're here to do the hard work. They're here to um, make things happen. But what happens though is if maybe from a young age, you've been given or taken a lot of responsibility, and that's also the 50 that we have in the South Node, right? Responsibility. That's the dilemma here that we're facing with that South Node being in the 50. I feel like the 50 and the 40 can come together sometimes, and they're both in um, tribal circuitry. So there's something about carrying all the weight and then just being like, oh, well, they're not going to do it, so I'm going to do it. Or they're expecting this of me. I'm going to just do it. And then they kind of overload themselves. And then they start to get resentful. And they're like, why is nobody helping me? Why is it that? Why? Do I always have to do it on my own? And the thing is, is that when you've created a belief system around nobody's going to help me, so I have to do it myself, or I'm going to just have to carry this, or I'm just going to have to do it, you start to put up this transmission that says, I don't need your help. And then it, it, it gets you to exhaustion quicker because you feel like nobody's gonna help me, but it's working for you because it wants you to get to exhaustion, to, to adrenal fatigue, to too much stress, to whatever it is that it gets you to for you to be like, wow, this is unsustainable. Wow, I shouldn't be doing this. And the thing, the way that it's showing up here is we can see it's in Virgo, obviously it's a Virgo gate in the seventh house. The seventh house is relationships. We're probably gonna be seeing a lot of this showing up in the realm of relationships, whether it's in friendships or your personal relationship with your significant other. But the thing about this is it literally feels like this wall where you can't really offer help, give help. It's like you, you don't even consider that person. You don't even think about them. Oh, they might be struggling. Let me ask them if they need help. They just seem like they got it. But then you talk to me, it's like, I'm really struggling. I really need help. And it's like, wow, but it's really hard to give you help. I wonder why this is happening in your field. And I would have to bypass the energy and push through the energy and be like, here, let me help you. And I was speaking to my husband today who has the 40 in the, in his moon. And he said something that was super helpful for, for me, like in moments that you're recognizing the person in their pattern of exhaustion, caring too much, having too much responsibility, pushing, forcing, whatever it is, you just come to them and say, I'm here for you. How can I help you? It's like, the weight melts and like, wow, someone cares. Someone, someone's going to ask someone, someone cares about me. Someone is going to help me because I feel like there's, they know their purpose. They can do a lot and it takes a heck of a lot to take them down too. And so when they do get to that point of exhaustion and I like, it's this feeling of, I'm just tired. I'm so freaking tired, but they feel like they don't have any other option, but to do it, to carry it, to just carry on. And so when you see somebody in that can I help you? Do you need help with anything? I'm here for you. I care about you. Do you want to talk about it? That opens up the portal. Like immediately when my husband gave that verbiage, I'm like, whoa, there seems to be an access point now. And it's not just you as the 40 person asking for help. That is important too. Even when you ask help, if you have that energetic like thing, it's very hard to be like, yeah, let me do that for you. Because I don't, I, I, I can't, I can't exactly tell you what's happening in the energetics of it, but there's no portal for anybody to be able to get in. And you've got to work through whatever it is that is preventing you from receiving help. Because the pattern's just trying to get you to exhaustion or death, whatever comes first. And it's, and it's hard for people that carry the 40. I feel for you guys. Yeah, I remember we called it the gate of aloneness. And now it's in the first line. So the gate of aloneness is like, I Double. have to do it by myself. And maybe God could help me, but that's kind of the only hope somewhere. And then that, that could be kind of the helplessness, the God isn't helping. So definitely to find ways of, of connecting with the other, with humans. And I feel too somehow that when there is a pattern of exhaustion, it's actually not only the person. It's actually in this tribal circuitry. Like if, if there, if there is, 
if some parts of the tribe are touched by exhaustion, chances are that they're exhaustion everywhere. So if the 40 is exhausted, chances, chances are that the 37 is also exhausted because somehow the energy isn't flowing. So for the 37 person or for the person next to the 40, it can be kind of contradictory to be like, I'm exhausted too, how can I ask this person? But maybe they're not even gonna ask you to do something. Maybe you're just gonna kind of melt in some way like the heart and just know that they aren't alone so to kind of maybe get over a bit of that fear like oh I don't I don't want to ask because I don't want to have more on my shoulders but maybe it's just that kind of uh, like intention and feeling that the, the 40 the mother and the father the 40 and the 37 are understanding each other uh, but I feel like sometimes the 37 is afraid of like kind of breaking because you know, they're already kind of the roles that each one have responsibilities. And you, the last thing you want to do is to have more responsibilities. So kind of checking that. And I think that this is somehow connected to with the square that we have between Venus and Uranus. Uranus is kind of sudden changes and and quantum leaps. And then Venus is money and relationships that we're going to um, simplify a little bit. So Venus in the 29 kind of saying, what have I committed to and what needs to blow up, you know, and how can we simplify? I'm not in, in 23, like I'm not ready to do this anymore. This is not going to lead to any, you know, quantum leaps. So there can be things in the financial, there can be things in money that need to kind of be re- re-evaluated and because venus just went into 40 days of retrograde there is also re-evaluation that can happen but with a square the tension the creative tension to uranus you know changes might happen faster than you know you kind of just have to think the thought that maybe this is not happening and it blows up in your face so don't really like you know take it seriously in some sense but also know if it blows up it's actually uh, Uranus kind of helping us to simplify so that we can start from scratch again, whether that's money or any kind of finances or relationships can be both relationships that are intimate and not intimate. It's also mm -hmm. kind of partnerships uh, possi possible, possibly here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember thinking about that too recently when I was um, paying one of my credit card bills, I was using one of my accounts and I used my credit card was like $2,000 and I was transferring, I had $2,000 in one of the accounts and I was like, wow, now this account is empty. It feels like it has so much potential now. And whatever energy that money came in, it's gone now. So it's like, whatever comes in, isn't going to be um, convoluted with some of that other energetics, not saying that that was bad energetics, but I'm just saying, if you're, if you feel like you don't have anything, like let the rest of what's in your cup come out so that you can have a clean slate or a clean cup. So now whatever was in your cup before, it's not going to saturate and go into the other stuff. So just on a metaphorical level, looking at things from an optimistic viewpoint, if things do need to like explode or break apart to come to like that blank slate or, or, or whatever, you it, it's for you, it's beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where are we at? Oh, well, um, we're kind of at time now. I think Belle and I will try, try to um, do this more frequently. We're trying to figure out what the best schedule is. And so if we do come in, we'll probably start with uh, the transits and see what's in Mercury, see what's in the moon, because those do kind of transition pretty quickly. And that'll give us some cool things to to elaborate on and speak about and let's see what each of us are feeling do you feel any of the res any resonance with some of the things that we're saying we want to hear what's going on in your life because we are one one collective one humanity and what's impacting one person might be impacting another person and then when more people are saying oh yeah i'm experiencing that you don't feel alone suddenly and that gate 40 of aloneness it's like wow i'm not alone we're we're parallel we may not be doing it together but at least someone else is going through it too so yeah and the place to learn all these foundations to just be able to pull gate 40 out of the hat or gate 29 or gate 23 is the inner circle we have upgraded the membership now so you get the archetype courses with within it so basically you learn eaching and human design and astrology and gene keys for each and every gate there is like so much in each course and that's part of the inner circle and we also have member 
community calls on once a week and actually has like more creativity where we have are helping people to step up and kind of shine especially now in leo with their own uh leadership in within the community and we have some practices and embodiment stuff of course as well so that's the place if you want to be able to kind of do this for yourself in an embodied way but we are like we said going to come on and kind of weave for you because it's really cool to have a bit of astro weather horoscope a few times a week to really be able to kind of feel into what's happening what's resonating for you yeah thanks for joining us and tuning in live or on the replay wherever you're catching it and we'll see you next time bye bye